Hi guys, again from the world. Thank you for uh, tuning in. I was too ambitious with my previous video. I wanted to do everything in 15 minutes and uh, that's, that was not the case. So I want to keep uh, the TED uh, talk serious uh, within the 15 minutes in order not to keep you boring with my stuff. <clears throat> now I have to make a bit of follow-up video um, dealing with the same matter in order to give you sufficient stuff uh, for the IP series. So this is IP and business again. Thank you for uh, tuning in. I will continue a bit to talk about what it is about the IP rights which you have to take care of or which, is, which exist, which are at your disposal, I would think, uh, as a weapon or as a defense or uh, offense weapon uh, in order to keep your business safe. I walked you through uh, two examples of one dealing with uh, patents, which is invention. The patent is about invention, right? It's about um, something new and something which has technical aspects and is about an industrial application. That would be a patent. A typical thing of a patent would be a chip, right? Uh, the second was uh, the trademark. Trademark is a business identifier. So to make the, uh, the consumer uh, make it following to the origin of the company. So uh, make the link between the product and the company. That gives a possibility uh, that the reputation of the company, so the longer you're on the market, uh, the more reputation get the product you're coming from because uh, you have built a trust between uh, your trademark and the consumers. Well, that is uh, most importantly uh, the trademark, uh, the, the IP right as such, because each company uh, must have a trademark kind of business identifier to build <clears throat> this bridge to the consumer so that the consumer exactly knows which come from you in order to, well, that is a trustworthy company, I will buy that. And I will buy this on a premium. This is the part of the IP you get for your product, a premium price. So that was the second. And uh, now I want to do an example on the third one. Imagine you're a company in Nigeria. You are in the crypto world that is now the boiling part of the industry in, in the world. You're in the crypto world and you, th you are not satisfied with the hard and cold storage wallets, uh, which are for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies on the market. And you have, uh, what, another material and another fancy design and another, another uh, what, a, another, perhaps another functionality uh, with regard to this uh, cold wallet. But uh, the design is, uh, makes it, and the material that makes it something very uh, fancy for the consumers and attractive to the consumers. And that is one thing you want to monetize with regard to Europe. Does that sound a good idea for you? Okay. Now, in the uh, crypto world, uh, you uh, are not so sure and you will, would like to make a test. A test with regard to uh, the market or to the consumer, or you're not very much sure what happened about uh, Europe. So you go to a fair, to an exhibition in in, well, in Nigeria or in, in Abidjan or uh, I don't know where, where around you might go, uh, where are these fairs, the crypto fairs, and uh, you show them a bit around in order to uh, see how would the, the market reaction be on this. It was an international fair or it may not even be an international fair. And uh, you get a positive feedback from uh, the people. Okay. So uh, you think uh, it is a worthwhile idea because I get a uh, positive feedback and now I want to produce it and uh, it is produced 
And then in Nigeria, which is one of the countries where bit cryptocurrencies are on the move, are on running, are you know, uh, it is one of the countries where the inflation is running. So uh, it would be a, a good idea uh, to make a kind of test in Nigeria first, uh, rather than going to Europe directly. So you do this and you are uh, okay. And after the production and uh, the test market, well, it takes a bit, but uh, it is just seven months or so. Uh, and you're preparing for Europe and you get it after the, the uh, seven months, you get it into Europe, shipped into Europe and uh, you make a, a design application. A design application, you know, in Europe is very quick. It can be done at the uh, European, uh, the governmental office. It can be done in 48 hours. In two days, you already are there with a design Registration. So your registration, well, that's good. I'm fine. Let's go for it. And then afterwards you get a cancellation request. What? Again, cancellation request? How is that possible? And that is not, not done on somebody who has a similar design. No, it is somebody who says, well, it's not anymore new. What you're doing is not new. What? What? Uh, is there any other design application? And um, you realize, no, there's no other design application around the world. So what? What the hell? What the heck they have done to me? So you realize, again, here's a trap with regard to intellectual property, which makes you impossible your business. Can you imagine this? Impossible your business. Your business, what you had thought of, what you have invested in probably uh, into uh, the, uh, the market and there's no other pro the product, no similar product and you still get barred from the register with the, with the consequence that anybody can copy you without any uh, penalty. So that is... Uh, why, why is that? Well, uh, you go to the lawyer and he will tell you, well, that is a kind of novelty. It's not about novelty. So if it is not new, then uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot register it. Well, you, you should not register it. You can register it because the novelty is not, uh, is not checked by the government agency at the moment of uh, application or registration. It is checked by others who can make a cancellation request. So in this case, probably somebody who was on the fair in uh, Nigeria and has an own interest in it, otherwise they would not interfere with your business. Uh, they say, well, uh, uh, it is not new because somebody has shown it to me already more than half a year ago. There's half a year between the disclosure and the possibility of making a, a design application, which is called the grace period. Now, that is uh, again uh, something where uh, small businesses might fail due to a trap which is uh, placed in front of them in the uh, IP world. So. Get you, I get you hopefully a bit interested in intellectual property, even though you are only, or only not, you are a business man and you want to do business, but uh, you want to be sure that the IP works in your favor and does not work against you. It can work easily against you if you don't have somehow a basics on intellectual property you want to know of. So this was uh, design. Design is the product, the shape of the product as such. Uh, with regard to that design application, you may have also, if it is a technical uh, issue, you may also have a patent. And then it may be different. You can still rely on the patent, on its functionality, although you may find other products with the same shape. So you are not protected with a shape, but still you may have some protection with regard to the functionality, to the technical application, which your device may still have. 
So I want to go to a fourth example now. Uh, you are now much savvy on IP. You have heard all of the examples and you said, well, I'm, I'm now, uh, I, I know some things here and I will do it differently. Rather than falling into uh, every trap the intellectual property has placed out there, I will keep everything to myself. So I will not make uh, a disclosure to the outside world. I will keep it to myself uh, what it is and I will put it out at the last moment. Okay. Okay, so let's stick with uh, this, this design. You have this design, the crypto world, which is boiling. So you want to do it on yourself. You have only uh, your, it's only yourself and, and your employees, two employees, which are close friends of yours, uh, who want to who want to make this business happen. And you develop uh, among yourselves. And finally, well, at a certain moment, uh, you have your product and that product uh, is engineered in a sense that it is not easily uh, to be copied. So you have, uh, you have it, so to say, uh, you have the device, which still may be fancy, but it is not protected. You uh, don't care about the, uh, the design uh, application. Uh, but they have, you have the functionality which cannot be easily reverse engineered. So you cannot look, you cannot open it, you cannot look into it, how it works, etc., because it destroys itself. It destroys itself once you're opening it, but it is constructed in a way that it will not, uh, it will not fail. It's, you do not need any maintenance or you don't need any, any, anything to do. There are no moving parts inside, so you can do it. Okay, that is... Uh, kind of a trade secret, right? You, you'd know what is inside, but you don't disclosure is in, in the patent, but it's only you. You have heard of Coca-Cola, who has something, a magic, uh, a magic uh, formula, uh, which is a trade secret. So uh, it works for 100, more than 100 years. And uh, well, uh, if it works for them, it may also work for me. Now, that would be a, a trade secret, a take trade secret. You do not need to register. That is uh, a trade secret is uh, protected in itself once it is created. OK, so uh, you had an agreement with all your partners and uh, you go to Europe now with your product and you see uh, well, you had some problems with one of the partners, but you, you know, he is gone. And uh, you go to Europe and you put it on the market and you see there is already something on the market and you say, well, how, how is that? How is that now possible? And uh, you want to defend against uh, that guy or that company. Uh, and you say, well, this is my trade secret. I did not disclose everything to the world. So how is it possible that uh, somebody uh, put this on the market somewhere? Well, you may have a trade secret, but if you don't have the paperwork done, you know, the paperwork, if you don't have the paperwork done, which with regard to your employees, with regard to uh, your uh, business partner, uh, with the regard to no uh, as you need condition, if you don't have your non-disclosure agreements, etc., if you don't have a protective measurements built around that trade secret, guess what? No. It is not a trade secret. It is not a trade secret. And what does it mean? It means you don't have any protection. So, again, again, we are done. You don't have a protection. And you didn't want to have a patent, right? Because you don't want to, uh, this disclosure. 
and uh, the, the 20 years, etc. So you want something more? Well, you, you, you have what? A design? No, you have nothing. You have nothing to protect yourself. And probably, well, there's something on the market already. You don't get a premium price. You get probably the same price the other has, but if the other is the first mover, it is the one who gets uh, the most reputation out of it, and it is uh, the, uh, the, the, the one who takes the business with. So it's not you, again, although it was you who did all the work, who had the basic idea, or um, who was already very advanced and the other took advantage of it. Okay, well, that's it. That's life. So we covered what? We covered uh, the uh, patents, <clears throat> the trademarks, the design or design patent application, so the shape. We covered uh, the trade secrets, which is also uh, an important IP right and often used because, if, you know, you don't have any... Uh, we have some paperwork, yes, uh, which I uh, just said, but you don't have any application to be done, you don't care about government agencies, etc. Uh, it is uh, something which is attractive in the sense, uh, but you have to uh, keep it uh, secret. secret. The core must be secret. It must be something which can be kept secret. Otherwise, uh, you will not have any protection because anybody can, if uh, it has not illicit access to your trade, trade secret, even if you have a wall, so the, the wall, uh, that is the first issue, and illicit access is the second issue. If there is not illicit access, but uh, somebody has come up with the same idea, so uh, uh, that is always possible, though your trade secret is not a protection against that one. Now, trade secrets. We have other, some other, some other... Uh, well, I'm already uh, about about the the 15 minutes. I uh, no, that is not good. But <laughs> let's keep let's keep going. Uh, just very quick. You have, we have two others. Uh, one is the general uh, geographical indication GI. Uh, that is very special for food issues. I will put this out in a video in a separate video. And we have plant varieties. Also a kind of very special niche uh, product for plants. And um, they have, uh, we have what else? Well, I think basically it is. The others are very niche products. So hopefully you enjoyed that video as well. Uh, I will promise to get better. That is now 18 minutes. That was three minutes too large. So next video, yes, will be about the administering of uh, um, yeah. IP rights in Europe. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye, world.